can be extremely supportive of someone or uh, some entity and at the same time offer a positive criticism. There's extremely little criticism in this. However, there's a little bit. This is regarding Fujifilm. Um, by the way, I actually went over these uh, notes uh, several times and actually consulted a couple people, not on what I was going to say here, but their thoughts on a couple things. Um, uh, like, for example, by the way, it's uh, really good news. Uh, Fujifilm uh, has uh, one of their shooters. Uh, 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 I can't say it's one of their shooters. I mean, he's chopped my head off if he hears me saying that. Um, has someone that has adopted the Fujifilm. In addition to his other system, he also shoots uh, Nikon. But he's done uh, two uh, big uh, uh, two uh, shoots that will, uh, one will come out uh, in the third week of January and the other one in uh, February. I, I assume I probably have one of those dates wrong. Sorry about that. Mr. Benjamin Kanarek, he's a haute couture and uh, true fashion photographer that uses, uh, that uh, works with uh, true models, not, uh, not the sort of uh, YouTube model photography that people are thinking about where you find somebody on Models May. <laughs> that's, that's not real model photography. You're talking about true hardcore fashion, haute couture, where you're looking at uh, dresses from, uh, you know, the top designers. Shoots for Vogue, Elle, Harper's Bazaar, Vogue, and uh, he's uh, internationally known. He's uh, Anyway, he has uh, two projects that he shot with the Fujifilm X-T2, and uh, those will be coming out uh, in the first uh, two months of uh, this coming year, 2018. I've seen uh, a few of the images from the shoot, which are absolutely stunning, and it's wonderful that uh, Fuji uh, has, uh, you know, that sort of uh, prestige. Uh, you have the best product in the world, but there are, comes a point in time where people actually have to have, and this is kind of hard to uh, delineate, define the point where we should say that uh, people, well, Fujifilm actually has uh, many really good shooters. They're there uh, needs to be a group of uh, creme de la creme uh, shooters that uh, inspire people that you know hey the you know the very best professionals uh, not only love this system but uh, they're using it and uh, and uh, and he he now is one of those um, uh, I don't want to speak for somebody else, especially for another photographer, so I'm actually choosing my words uh, very carefully. Um, specifically referring that people, one thing that actually disappointed me, like on the uh, Fujifilm uh, GFX, and I'm actually talking about some of the lenses that I think uh, Fujifilm uh, should be making, is that uh, while Fujifilm has many uh, really good shooters, uh, Fuji should uh, consider picking up, uh, you know, a few of these uh, famous shooters, uh, one of them being uh, Benjamin uh, Kanarak, who is now using Fuji in, uh, in, uh, dual use with his Nikon system. I hope that's a fair word uh, to say and I don't step on his feet in any way. One thing that I actually found, well I actually have the Fujifilm GFX camera. The camera is absolutely astounding so I give all praise and all praise possible and I've been medium format shooter since the days of photography school back in the early 1990s. Um, the GFX is uh, beats the heck out of the Pentax Z not only in build quality but uh, price and the quality you get and also far better than the uh, buggy Hasselblad X1D and Hasselblad doesn't even exist anymore it's just a name that was bought by DJI which is owned by the Chinese it's the same thing happened back in the day when Singer Sewing Machine went out of business the Chinese bought Singer Sewing Machine but specifically regarding the GFX and I had many people tell me this without me actually saying hey what do you think do you agree with me they told me outright, including someone that I've known for like, uh, oh geez, 30 plus years, when the GFX catalog came out, now the GFX uh, camera, which I own, I don't have in front of me, is meant for hardcore uh, uh, portraiture, fashion, corporate work, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, product photography, specifically product, uh, high-end uh, fashion. You know, it's a slow camera. All medium format cameras are slow. They don't have super fast autofocus. I mean, while some people have tried to, uh, you know, profile the camera for street use, which, you know, is certainly doable, it's less than ideal for that. However, its design is certainly applicable for that, and I've used the camera outdoors myself quite a lot. Um, the GFX catalog was really lacking. It was very plain, and I had several people comment the exact same thing I saw when I actually browsed through it, is that, 
there were, was a lot of uh, subpar, mediocre, lackluster um, stuff. It would be akin to a Lamborghini releasing a catalog of its uh, new car, and profile between the catalog would be, you know, grandma driving 20 miles an hour, you know, to the local grocery store to pick up some milk. It's like, well, there's grandma on the new Lamborghini model, so and so. It doesn't, you know, it's, you know, nobody aspires to, uh, uh, I hate to say it like mediocrity, but I thought the catalog was a uh, was a was a uh, a significant misstep. There should have uh, been uh, included, um, you know, a uh, um, a shooter uh, such as uh, Benjamin Canterac and uh, his fashion photography. And I know he does not use shoot medium format. I mean, he did back in the day, but I mean. If not him, somebody like him in a couple different genres, like uh, some uh, guru of uh, product photography and another uh, fashion photographer. Um, the GFX catalog was uh, really plain, and uh, uh, many people commented, like, they said the exact same thing that I said, and I didn't even, you know, reveal my comments or beliefs on the catalog to begin. This, that sort of uh, marketing approach, I thought, was a was a significant uh, misstep. And I know the GFX is marketed as a prosumer camera for people that are working uh, photographers. And there have been many people who uh, use, uh, use the GFX and profile their work um, that they produce wonderful images with the GFX. Obviously so, since it's a camera that excels in capabilities. But none of that was represented in the catalog brochure for the GFX. And that was a huge marketing misstep. I mean, you know, if... Uh, he hooked me up to a lie detector machine, and I was, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know, Dean Collins from back in the day, he was a photographer that I idealized. He died of cancer. He was a hardcore product photographer. He used basically nothing other than large format and medium format. And if you showed him the catalog and brought him, you know, he would say, why, why on earth do you have this uh, pro camera with this uh, mediocre work in there that doesn't inspire anybody to purchase the camera? That was uh, uh, a mistake. Um, as far as the lenses that Fujifilm should be making, there's a few here that uh, I believe in also concurrence with others, and there's overlap here. Most of it is overlap. Um, Fujifilm's uh, X-Series roadmap um, is obviously or, or logically so fulfilling a lot of the hobbyist uh, lenses for a top priority for a first or nearest manufacturer. Of course, Fujifilm is coming out with, as they have announced, a 200mm f2, which will be equivalent to a 300mm 2.8. And they're also coming out with the 8 to 16mm 2.8, which should be a uh, ultra wide uh, zoom. So they fulfilled the 300mm 2.8 spot. There are three lenses that Fujifilm really absolutely should be making. One of them is an 85mm prime lens, between 85mm and 105 uh, at f1.4. They really do need uh, something to uh, match with the 135mm f2 or even the 180mm f2.8 from Nikon. They do need that. Now, of course, they're coming out with a 200 f2, which is equivalent to 300mm 2.8, but they are missing the intermediate zone there uh, for professional use that exists between the 85mm which the Fujifilm has, and the 56.12, which is a wonderful lens, and the 200mm f2 that they've got coming out with, there's nothing in the intermediate there, which I hope Fujifilm is developing, or absolutely should be developing. Um, even if it was a 90mm f1.4, of course they would not make another 90mm lens, but uh, like a 105mm f1.4, or 105mm f1.8, um, um, which you'd have basically 150 to 160 millimeters, some equivalent in there, which is very close to 180 millimeter Nikkor, as the intermediate between the 56 and the uh, and the 200 millimeter f2 that Fujifilm is coming out with. One lens in the Miticon uh, 35 millimeter f0.95 is incredible. The lens that Fujifilm absolutely should be, and I know there's been talk about this on various rumor boards and whatnot. A 33 millimeter f1 or f0.95, Fujifilm should absolutely come out with a. Uh, a 35 millimeter or a 33 millimeter, even a 32, somewhere right in there, a, uh, an F1 or an F0.95. The Minicon is absolutely incredible. That is uh, really a rather important uh, artistic lens that the Fujifilm should actually have within their arsenal. And I know Fujifilm, like I said, is uh, fulfilling the hobbyist spectrum need of the hobbyist. 
shooter and the uh, prosumer and the professional but as far as filling these uh, empty uh, speed uh, uh, these empty uh, potholes in the road of the Fujifilm roadmap there are, there's three significant uh, potholes that should be filled uh, that uh, 85 to 105 millimeter prime not a zoom I said some prime between 85 and 105 or even up to 115 or even 135 um, and F14 and F18. F1, uh, lastly, like a, a 50 millimeter to 140. This is the least likely lens that uh, Fujifilm would uh, likely make, since they already have the 50 millimeter to 140 f2.8. But it's not fast enough. They do need an f2, even if it has a smaller uh, zoom range, like an 80 millimeter to 120 uh, f2. That would be perfectly fine. Um, Fujifilm does need those three uh, professional lenses uh, covered. The last one would be the one uh, least likely uh, to uh, to be made by Fuji, but certainly so, like a 105 millimeter f1.4 and a 33 millimeter f0.95 or, or a 33 millimeter f1. One thing uh, Fujifilm seriously needs to consider in the XT3 when whenever that uh, comes out. Uh, not speculating that there's an XT2, there's going to be an XT3 whenever, who knows. But uh, one serious thing that needs to be done, and, and countless uh, hordes and, and throngs of people have uh, talked about wanting to have their Fujifilm for event photography and um, for, uh, uh, for, uh, um, Oh well, yeah, event photography, club photography, uh, evening photography. Um, Fujifilm greatly needs to improve ISO performance. That's really the the only thing that I find is a deficiency. I've already said countless times that the X-T2 is my favorite camera of all time, and God knows I've owned countless cameras. I got a couple X-T2s, so this is not something that needs to change in the sensor, rather than uh, the uh, the SNR firmware and the uh, signal processing as it's clocked off the sensor, so far as um, you know, signal interpretation so that in camera uh, high ISO noise reduction can greatly improve. There's a lot of things you can actually obviously do with the raw files, which is why everybody should be shooting raw as so far as uh, noise reduction in post and Lightroom, Topaz add ons, for example, or uh, other noise reduction software. But Fujifilm really, 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 really needs to improve high ISO noise. Uh, high ISO noise uh, and bring it closer uh, to uh, to uh, Nikon and uh, Sony. Dynamic range is more than sufficient. Uh, anybody that's actually complained about dynamic range issues on the X-T2, X-Pro2 is making a mistake. There's absolutely no issues there. I've scaled them off as far as being comparable to the Nikon D810 and others the X-T2 and the sensor, the X-Trans2 sensor. X-Trans2 sensor inside the X-T2 and uh, and likewise in the X-Pro2 is uh, more than sufficient. There's no issues on dynamic range. Um, one thing uh, Fujifilm is slightly making a mistake on, of course they've partnered with uh, METS for the making of the EFX 500 to the Speedlight, which I have a couple of those, and they're really wonderful Speedlights. They do wonderful uh, flash comp. One thing that's hard to do is flash compensation in HSS, high speed sync. Most Speedlights, including Nikon's only uh, own creative light system, fail on this front, and Fuji uh, succeeded in that. Uh, Fuji is making a bit of a mistake in not partnering, partnering with the subsidiary companies uh, for product diversification that uh, makes up the entirety of the camera ecosystem and Fuji's not going to get into making you know a subsidiary trinket things you don't think of it as a speed light as a as a trinket obviously so it is a, a essential component to Fujifilm basically all talk about people complaining about insufficient lighting systems for Fujifilm it's all died now I used to get lots of flack on that all the time but, you know, I get into Fujifilm but they just don't have enough lighting systems well, as far as strobes, it doesn't make any difference. Professional strobes, I mean, you're talking about all manual anyway, but for TTL, HSS, and um, advanced amateur, amateur, professional, or prosumer uh, speed lights, we have Godox now. I wouldn't even consider Yong Nuo since it breaks really bad. It's a bunch of garbage. We have the Fujifilm speed light made by Metz. We have uh, Godox. We have Nissan. Um, we have a lot of great options, and I'm also, of course, found out we actually have hypersync options with professional strobes with sufficient T1 timing. So lighting on the Fujifilm system within a really short period of time, I mean, Nikon's been on the scene now for decades and decades. Within a really short period of time, 
a lot of options, an enormous amount of options have opened up for Fujifilm on uh, speed lights such that nobody is complaining to me about that anymore as, uh, you know, something that is lacking on Fujifilm is why they're not purchasing a Fujifilm. So that doesn't exist anymore. So kudos to Fujifilm and others, but Fujifilm still needs to diversify uh, with uh, some third-party vendors for expanding the ecosystem for all the little uh, frou-frou, as I call it, uh, gadgetry that would uh, go within the ecosystem of uh, Fujifilm. It is extremely likely, too, that Tamron will be making lenses for Fujifilm. I've heard this from several different sources. hope Tamron doesn't crucify me for saying that. And it's no slant against Fujifilm at all. Um, if anything, it has always helped uh, even Nikon. Nikon you know, I've heard from reps that, well, Nikon does not like, you know, everybody on Earth making, you know, AF systems, only everybody on Earth. I mean, Tamron, Sigma, Sigma doesn't count at all. Making a lenses for their, uh, for their cameras, it opens up a market where someone would buy a Nikon, for example, because there is an array of more lenses available for it. So anything that actually helps Fujifilm sell cameras or someone get into a Fujifilm ecosystem, you know, even if Fujifilm would like to crucify me for saying that, uh, on the uh, on the back end of everything, if you get someone to jump into a Fujifilm system uh, with the added benefit of saying, hey, Tamron also makes autofocus lenses for Fujifilm. Fujifilm lenses are the best, but Tamron's filled in all these other little gaps here. And, and that would be wonderful, not only for Tamron, obviously, to make money, because the Fujifilm systems have just absolutely skyrocketed in sales. I mean, it has gone gangbusters, and that's not my opinion. I've got that from many, many sources. I can think that that only helping Fujifilm, even though that would be competition, it would still help the bottom line of Fuji, so it would be no real competition for Fujifilm's lenses, and neither has Tamron nor Sigma, for that matter, been a real competition of a Nikon lens. People are still buying Nikon lenses by the hordes and uh, you know someone can only buy the Nikon camera and buy some cheaper Tamron lenses that's fine they still bought into Nikon and so the same would be applicable uh, for Fujifilm as well. Um, Fuji has a fair uh, room for improvement which exists with all systems however. Suffice to say the Fujifilm is doing a better job than other companies currently including all the rest of them. Canon hasn't done anything in five years uh, Fujifilm has the best current product and the best customer service of anybody, and it's not just my subjective opinion. I mean, there's a lot of empirical data behind that. Fujifilm has a crop sensor market uh, sealed up pretty darn tight. Uh, Fujifilm has uh, crucified others in the medium format range, making a far superior camera to that of the Pentax Z and uh, the really buggy Hasselblad X1D, which is not a contender at all. Not only is it buggy, but it's really expensive. And their native lenses have absolutely abysmal, horrific bokeh. Um, there's an extremely high likelihood, based upon pure speculation on my part, that Fujifilm will be expanding in the area of medium format beyond the GFX. Um, and uh, I don't just mean like a 100 megapixel sensor, which is on the horizon, to be sure, sometime in the distant future. Because it's been announced that Sony is going to come out with a medium format camera and they will have that 100 megapixel sensor. Phase 1 is doomed. He wants Fuji. Once, uh, the Phase 1 market, of course, is extremely small. We're talking about uh, the camera system with a lens, which costs more than your house, quite likely. Certainly more than your brand new Mercedes. Uh, phase 1 will be doomed when that, uh, when that comes down the pike. And that's something that certainly the Fujifilm will adopt, but there is based upon pure speculation on my part, to considerable logical belief that uh, Fujifilm will not only be expanding into the 100 megapixel, which I already know that they will be, be expanding into the 100 megapixel domain on the GFX2 or whatever they plan to call it, but also subsidiary medium format uh, uh, cameras. So there's a high, uh, really high order of, uh, everything is speculation. There are people that make money in the stock market based upon hardcore logical speculation and it's not just you know half-assed speculation it's logical speculation so there's extremely good information that uh, that will be happening um, Fujifilm is uh, also likely poised to uh, jump into uh, the video arena, arena and uh, body slam both uh, Sony and Panasonic on the prosumer 
and, uh, and uh, advanced amateur front, which has a great deal of room for marketability given the cost and effectiveness issues lacking uh, both in Sony and Panasonic. Sony's overheating issues and pricing issues. And uh, just imagine a perfect GH4, you know, I, well, this is just pure speculation, but I mean, there's no reason in the world why Fujifilm would even want to contend with Nikon, Canon, and Sony in the full frame arena. It's just the dumbest move on earth would be Fuji moving into full frame, and I've made videos on this, and the countless logical reasons why it would be an epic stupid move on the part of Fujifilm to even think about it. So in a really short period of time, Fujifilm has dominated medium format. I've just crucified all the rest of the, of the fronts on that. Even when Sony comes out with a medium format camera, which they've already announced that they will, on some front, I know that they have, it's going to be really expensive, and it will be nowhere near as good as the GFX. And it's already way better than the X, uh, X1D Hasselblad, and um, way better than the Panasonic Z. All of those have the same sensor, by the way. Fujifilm has a different micro lens design and superior gain and a better sensor design, and a far better camera in the GFX. So overnight, Fujifilm dominated medium format. They have a, a crop sensor sealed up. And uh, a high likelihood based upon the logical speculation and, uh, and uh, that they are going to, you know, tackle um, the uh, Sony video and uh, Panasonic video for a prosumer video use. And uh, uh, we'll see on that one. But uh, anyway, I think this is really mild criticism on my part of Fuji because there's no perfect camera company out there, no perfect camera. You know, it's just mild criticism. Uh, Fujifilm did make a mistakes on the GFX catalog. Uh, they should have picked up a few famous shooters to do some hardcore fashion slash product work for the catalog. Um, that was that was a, a marketing uh, mistake there. Um, Fujifilm really has three hardcore lenses for professionals, but professionals in the totality of Fujifilm's uh, sales doesn't amount to a very high percentage, so the fact that they would be making those lenses last, just like the 200mm f2 is slated for next year, I mean, well, that's a hardcore, expensive frigging lens, and that's the reason why it would be made last instead of first. I mean, you want to appeal to the smaller percentage of your market last. I mean, you have the prosumer and advanced amateur and the hobbyist photographer, you want to, you know, bring out those lenses first, and that is exactly what Fujifilm has already done. So, a logical, intelligent move on their part. Wouldn't expect anything less from them. Um, but those three lenses do need to come out. Like 105 to 135 millimeter f1.4, f1.8, a 33 to 35 millimeter f1 or f0.95, and like a 50 to 140 or say an 80 to 120. There are limitations there for optics uh, f2. Uh, if Fujifilm can drop those three lenses in, that would be incredible. As soon, the more the Fujifilm doesn't need more than a handful of really famous, like, well, this person is a serious, you know, their work is being seen worldwide. That person's using a Fuji. That sort of stuff, people don't aspire to mediocrity. I mean, you know, I'm just a schmuck. I'm just a fat, bald schmuck sitting here, and you know, and of course I've quote unquote sold an enormous amount. I God knows how many thousands of people told me they bought an X-T2 of my recommendation. Uh, virtually all of them, basically all of them are just totally happy, 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 happy. But I mean, Fujifilm also needs that, and like I said, I'm nobody, but Fujifilm needs that echelon of stratospheric photographers that will drop, it's like, wow, that person's using a Fuji. Look at the work. Um, that, of course, is a person that is skilled with the tool as opposed just to the tool itself. But, I mean, people do, I mean, that is a, an enormous amount of sales. I mean, there's reasons why, you know, people, <laughs> I shouldn't say that, I was about to make a comparison. to uh, People that give products to famous people, so they'll use it, and hopefully someone will see them taking a picture of them on the street with it, like a paparazzi. Oh, my God, they're using so-and-so product. It has to be great. And the same thing is true of photography. You know, like, oh my god, so-and-so super famous photographer shooting with a Fuji. Fujifilm needs to consider dropping more of their marketing budget into that because that's really the biggest gain for payoff for them. Um, it really, I mean, the payback is absolutely astronomical. It only takes one or two uh, really hardcore super famous supermodel photographers 
uh, whether that be product or fashion photography, like, well, that person's using a Fuji. Well, I, I hadn't considered a Fuji until I saw it on the cover of uh, Vogue or, you know, the person that, well, whichever genre or branch of photography. I think Fujifilm's making a mistake by not uh, putting more of their focus into that. Not saying they don't have really good shooters, you know, using their products right now. They do, but there's there's a dearth. There's a... Uh, there's a... A lack of uh, that uh, caliber of photographers, because it was certainly lacking in the GFX catalog. Before that catalog ever should have came out, someone should have said, "This catalog has got some really mediocre work in it. It's just it's not doesn't inspire anybody." It's like, "Yeah, it was a really expensive catalog. Everything I see in here is just mediocre. Like you know, what someone could do if uh, you know they went out. Uh, it's just it wasn't good. It was a mistake." This is positive criticism. I, mean, I love Fuji film to death. And uh, no, they don't pay me to say anything. I spend my own money on these cameras. I don't have affiliate links, and I'm not a puppet for anybody. Um, I've never seen a camera company or a camera come along like Fuji ever. And I've owned a crap load of cameras. I mean, just a hell of a lot of them. And uh, fix them, too. I love taking them apart. It's looking at design flaws or, you know, lack thereof. And, uh, anyway, thanks so much for watching. This video did go on quite a bit, but I just had a lot of information to discuss. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.